Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Build. In today's episode, we're gonna continue on the Jumpicon, trying to get it as close as we can to making it a running and driving vehicle. We have a race in less than two weeks that we're trying to take this thing to. So, normally I have a, a thing that we're, you know, where we're trying to start and finish and a goal in mind, and honestly, I have no idea what we're really exactly trying to accomplish. We're just gonna try to do a ton of stuff as fast as we can. So the title is probably your best reference. Since we don't use clickbait, it probably always is your best reference. But anyways, let's get to work right after this ad break. How have you guys been doing? Have you taken down the demon lord yet? Have you done your laundry? Have you crushed the ice golem? Have you ascended the doom tower? Or how about, have you battled in PvP arena against millions of other players? If you have not, that is okay because there's still time to raid. That's right, today's episode is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Explore millions of champion combinations and master countless tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arenas. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 500 champions blessed with unique skills, you can build your team, develop your champions, and raid your way. If you're as hyped as I am and you're ready to go right now, just click the link in the top of the description, download the app for free, it's right there. But wait, there's more. Raid is a super popular game. As you can see, 76,745,848 people have played Raid. That's four times population in New York. And the game is played all over the world in every single country, played for over 12.5 billion hours. That's almost 1.5 million years. That's probably longer than any of us are gonna live. That's enough time to travel to Mars and back 1.25 million times. Let's see Elon do that. And 1,900 very dedicated players have played every single day since the game came out. How is that possible? No breaks. What I personally love about Raid is the PvP aspect. They have an awesome PvP arena where you can play against millions of different real players and test your skills against theirs in a head-to-head -head battle. And if you want a pro tip, the best way to win weekly rewards is to join a clan and fight the clan bosses. So what's new in Raid? Well, this month Raid has a jam-packed schedule of events to kick off the summer and a bunch of new content. As always, they've got a bunch of brand new champions coming out and every single one of them looks awesome. There's also a new rotation of the Doom Tower, which I definitely want to finish this month. So I'm gonna try and summon as many of these new champions as possible and see if they can help me reach the top of the Doom Tower. And Raid's always got a lot going on and this month is no different. So don't wait around and don't miss out. Check it out now. If you want to get a head start in Raid, all you gotta do is click the link in the top of my description or scan the QR code in the corner and you're gonna get an epic hero, Chinor, who is amazing for the Doom Tower. You're gonna get 200 thousand silver, one XP boost, one energy refill, and one ancient shard, so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. All this treasure is going to be waiting for you right here, and remember that the rewards are only available for the next 30 days and only for new players. And it's that easy, just click the link in the description and I will see you in game. Huge thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring yet another one of our episodes, such an epic supporter of the channel, helping make sure that we keep gas in the tank. Alright, let's get down to work. All right guys, first step, there's a bunch of stuff that's behind this engine that we need to work on and some of the stuff on the engine we need to work on. Let's pull the engine out again. All right, once again, we got the engine out. We're gonna crack the transaxle off. Oscar is gonna work on installing the clutch, the new slave cylinder, the new uh, O-rings that go behind the slave cylinder, getting all that ready so we have a good clutch. I'm gonna work on the front end. We have a power steering pump absolute nightmare. I don't know if we told you guys this, but our racing power steering pump that we bought um, wasn't the right size. So I bought a modified pulley to put on the Corvette power steering pump. Don't worry, our cleaning person is coming in on Tuesday. We'll take care of all this. Anyways, so I'm gonna use pump puller, pull this off of here, put this onto here, put an AN fitting on the back of this, and then we will have an AN equipped power steering pump that is ready to go on the engine. So I'll be working on the front of the engine accessories. Oscar will be working on the clutch. Kyle is working on the brake lines. Oh, 
progress finally we got some things together so we got our slave cylinder in here um, we actually got a factory defect slave cylinder so we had to get another one um, there's some special o-rings behind there that we got in got the slave cylinder in I'm hoping that won't cause us any problems but if we spring a leak that's where it'll be from clutch uh, is bolted to the flywheel, which is bolted to the crank, so we're all good there. Um, nothing too special. This is a stock clutch. We're gonna run with a stock clutch for now. If, um, you know, we might blow this to smithereens once we get our higher horsepower engine. It'll definitely last through this engine though. Um, so that's good. And then the power steering pump, man, did this give us a lot of problems. It was all uh, revolving around pulling the stock pulley off. We had a lot of trouble, but we eventually got it off. We put this modified smaller pulley on. So this is gonna build higher PSI because our system that we're designing once more and we have an actual overflow kind of pop-off system that will return it back if it gets too much PSI. So we, it's a smaller pulley, that pulley's on, and then over here you have an AN feed line so you can uh, you know feed really really high pressure so that's a custom order part and then the return is low pressure so it just uses that so I'm gonna go ahead and get this bolted up to the block and measure out the um, serpentine belt measure out the serpentine belt size that we need and while we're doing that we can start installing our intake manifold as well We took the uh, injectors out of the stock Corvette fuel rail and cleaned them up, gave them a little once over so those will get lubed up and put into the intake manifold. Um, we're gonna run those. Deechworks did send us a set for our race engine. We're gonna save those for when our race engine comes in. So this is the intake manifold. It's a little dusty. Same one we took to LS Fest with us. Uh, that's why I'm missing a couple bolts that I'll find here soon. Put the gaskets in here so now it's ready to actually seat onto the head. So we'll be bolting this down then uh, putting the injectors in the fuel rails in there. Uh, I seem to have lost an O-ring. I have one here and I don't have one here and I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a really, really hard O-ring to replace. So I have to call Holly on that one, but we have way bigger problems than that. We got the power steering pump bracket on and um, my, my awesome AN fitting is running right into our alternator bracket. Now alternator bracket is aftermarket so your alternator is obviously not normally there and uh, it's slamming that thing right into there. So we got to come up with a um, alternate routing for this. I think we're going to have to cut this and, and, and re-weld it because there's not much else really that we can do. It's a tough one. Cut and weld, I think, is our only option. Cut and weld or move the alternator. We'll think about this. And if you see us cutting and welding it in the next scene, you know what we decided to do. Hey, 30 seconds later, we figured out a better idea than any of that craziness. We're gonna clock it. So it's meant to go like this, oops, uh, like that. And it's got two parts where it bolts up. We're gonna flip it around and that's gonna be a better position for absolutely everything for us to be able to hook up to our hydraulic system. There is some structure here blocking our way. We're gonna get rid of that and then we'll be able to bolt it in and then we have to custom build one support for it that bolts in right there and we'll be good to go. So some quick mods. While Oscar is working on that, I'm gonna get our intake manifold and injectors all dialed up. Alrighty guys, it's the next day. We got the intake manifold on, fuel injectors are on, fuel rails are on. We're thinking about doing the crossover back here. We gotta either do it here or here. This side is what we're going for right now. Oscar works some magic once again, saved us on this power steering. So now we believe we got the, the correct power steering setup that we want, the right pulley, the right size. Our AN fitting is running at, like up, which is great. Cause over here would have been a total headache and our returns right here. So um, it is time to measure out. We're gonna measure out our serpentine belt that we need and that will, uh, and then we'll go buy that. So just measure that with a piece of string, find out how many inches you need and we'll go order that. And it's time to do some painting. Oscar. I think I already headed out and started painting the engine mounts. They need to be uh, steel at black so they don't rust. 
These throttle bodies are gonna get a coat of paint just because they're super ugly. These are used, I'm not sure what vehicle they're off of, but they're 92 millimeter drive-by wire throttle bodies. And that is what um, this intake manifold takes. This vehicle is running drive-by wire, so it's different than the drive-by cable like what we used on the boat episode if you just watched that. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask these up real nice and give them a coat of paint. Don't wanna paint in there obviously, or back here, or on this face, but everything outside. Steel it black, be nice, protective, awesome. raining mother nature doesn't care about build all right uh i put garbage bags no those aren't garbage bags that's a shopping bags uh over my intake so they'll i don't know hopefully dry oscar's taking the mustang out of winter storage he's gonna he's warming it up right now getting ready to be ripping it around so keep an eye out if you guys see the oscar man driving around and i think it is time to measure out our serpentine belt uh, go get a serpentine belt, get some lunch, and then we'll, that'll button up this engine. We have a small breather problem where one of the breather valves is missing. We might have to buy that from dish door. This guy, we have no breather for that guy. It's this guy. You check the other valve covers outside? I didn't check the other valve covers. I think they have it. They might have it. If we don't have it, we'll just order, or we'll just buy one. They're probably uh, down at the auto parts store where, we'll get our, where we will get our serpentine belt. I cannot talk today. I can't speak today. All right, we're back from lunch. We got the serpentine belt on. For some reason, that serpentine belt cost $42, but oh well, moving on. Uh, we were gonna put our injector packs up, or not injector packs, what is that? Coil packs. So these things uh, power the spark plugs. Uh, we were gonna mount them up here, but they interfere with the exhaust, and we really want this exhaust to be exactly where it is. So we're gonna do what we did on the last um, LS swap Hercon that we did, where we build a plate here and bolt this to that and uh, that will be nice and solid. We need to go get some uh, plug wires and then we'll be able to run to our spark plug. So Oscar's gonna work on doing that modification. It's, it's a decent bit of fabrication and bolting up. Also when we do that, we have to switch all the wiring for those front to back so it hits the right um, cylinder. While he's doing that, I'm gonna jump into our fuel cell. So this is our racing fuel cell. Um, it's all certified for the, to pass the safety and tech and everything that we need to. And there is outlet, return, and vent. The vent doesn't need any plumbing, but the outlet and return both need some plumbing. There's a, there's a little bit of mystery within this cell here. So I gotta learn about it, dig into it, and um, figure out how to make sure our outlet and return are both working well. Oscar wrapped up our coil pack uh, install. You see they're mounted really hard right here to our engine mount. That's awesome. We're gonna go source some of the um, spark tube cables tomorrow. Oh man, this was this was a lot of fun. It doesn't it doesn't look too fancy right now, but here's here's what we did. Um, everything on the internal side is great. That's all buttoned up and awesome. We ordered a flexible fuel neck hose that's gonna run out to there, so that's done. This is our rollover thing, so it runs. Does a 90 right here, runs down, and then comes this way, comes this way, and goes up like this. And then I ordered a um, filter that we need to put an air filter right here. Um, so like, you know, when we're driving, dust and debris isn't falling into our discriminator valve. This thing's like, I wanna say two or three hundred dollars just for this guy. Um, so the, the hose though isn't bending exactly how we would want it. It kind of dips down a little bit. So before I go ahead and fully mount this thing in, we ordered some elbows that are gonna come this weekend. And we're gonna do, when it gets to the corner back there, we're gonna do a 90, then we're gonna do a 90 here. And then it'll get mounted in conjunction with this guy. Sorry, that goes like that. And, uh, and it'll live like kind of away from the engine. But it's all ready and it's all set up. And that means that, it, <laughs> I almost said when we roll this thing over. If we roll this thing over, fuel will not be able to get out of there so that's good moving on oscar's going to start with the wiring harness we are going to steal the wiring harness off of the boat engine because it's the right spec for this engine and the next engine that we need so that's going to go on here and i'm going to source out some spark plug wires
engine's ready. Oscar and I wrapped up the engine, so did the wiring harness, modifications to the wiring harness, uh, spark plug cables, exhaust manifold, that's all good. So we got through the whole checklist of the engine. Everything else needs to be done with the engine inside the vehicle. So consider the engine ready to go in. And again, this is our test engine. We have an eight or 900 horsepower-ish engine on the way. Uh, while we were working on that and much before that, Kyle has been working on the brake line system for the last two weeks and the clutch line. So this right here is our clutch line. And these are our brake lines and they run front, all corners in the front and right here in the back to our brake calipers. Let me, let me show you how that was done. So it's pretty dang cool looking. This is a stock Lamborghini brake booster and that runs out to our biasing switch. So we can change the brake bias now from front to rear, all that we need to make sure that we got the best uh, braking. This is our hard line that's eventually gonna run into our clutch once we install the clutch pedal later. So we've got brake lines completely ran. We're hoping by the end of tonight that we will have uh, brake calipers completely welded on all four corners and we'll be able to finish the brake system. Uh, we tested one brake caliper over here. So this is actually tack welded in. So um, that'll be like a uh, that's the type of stuff that we got a full weld out and the rear ones are a little bit more tricky because of how it all comes together. We had a lot of troubles with these brakes and uh, we finally found a package that works. This is basically a brake system off of a 2012 Ford Mustang GT. Big, big calipers, big, big rotors, lots of stopping power. So we're kind of cruising through our to-do list over here to keep track of everything. So the next thing that we want to do is all the welding that needs to get done in this back area, we want to quickly bust that out. So our upper uh, radiator mount hoop, that needs to be welded in. Um, there's some bolts that we need, some holes that we need to drill and some bolts that we need to throw through here. And, uh, and these are just temporarily mounted. So we're going to weld the plates in that hold our um, shock reservoirs. Well, that's all going on. I'm gonna start working inside the cabin. We need to mount a um, accelerator pedal. So that's gotta be mounted in there in the right spot. And these harnesses need to be all mounted in. Very specific hardware had to be ordered to be able to do this. I got all the hardware. So now I gotta drill the right holes and run the bolts and everything so we can mount our harnesses correctly. I'm excited though, That'll be a, that's a big step. All the welding in the back is done. Then we threw a coat of steel at black on everything. Oscar went hardcore. He even did steel at black on the whole firewall. And it looks honestly a lot better. Uh, harnesses we ran into a small problem. The anti-submarining belt is in and the eyelets are good everywhere. So the, the parts where it attaches are good, but we're missing the hardware to bolt it up. And also just realize the seats are gonna come ha uh, wanna come out for uh, wiring the whole car. It's gonna be a lot easier with the seats out. So we're pausing on the harnesses, moving over to the pedal. While that's going on, I'm gonna be working on building mounts for the trans cooler. So I actually have to do four different things that come out and attach to the head to hold the trans cooler right where it is. And then once that package is kind of done, we can uh, throw the whole engine into the car. Hi guys, it's a new day. It's Monday after the weekend, so honestly, I don't really even remember what we left off on. Oscar, do you know what you were doing on last Friday? I finished the gas pedal. Ah, gas pedal's in. <laughs> And uh, I was working on the trans cooler, which I got the brackets ready for, but there's a bunch of wiring bundle underneath that, and we got to reroute that wiring we learned today. So I'll install that a little bit later in this episode. Let me show you Oscar's handiwork on the gas pedal. Accelerator pedal, uh, that's right there. 
great positioning, works awesome. That's a gas pedal. Next, we need a clutch. That's what. That's how we make the second manual Huracan in the world. Clutch goes right there. We've done all this before. You have a clutch pedal. We build an extension to bring it out to the right distance, and then you you know hammer it through the firewall, and yeah, clutch pedal goes in. Oscar redid the engine wiring. It's all basically going out the front now, which is how we need it so we can reach the ECU past the firewall. I promise I am gonna install that uh, trans cooler, but I forgot to paint the the backside of the brackets, so the paint is still drying. I just sprayed them up. Kyle is finished with running the brake lines, so all of our brake lines are in. Um, it goes hard line back to here with a flexible steel braided line that runs into the calipers, and now we can pressurize the calipers. The whole system's all bled and everything's good, so when we pressurize the caliper, it obviously, obviously squeezes the brake pads onto the rotor, and what that does is it lines up our caliper with our rotor perfectly, and we know our rotors are installed flush, so then we have the bracket it already bolted to the caliper so now we just need to weld the bracket onto our hub and that's where our brakes go so we're going to be walking around every corner tack welding the bracket on to the hub and then we'll pull the calipers away and fully weld out the bracket on the hub Got the calipers tack welded on there, the brackets are tack welded in place, so we gotta pull the caliper off and fully weld it out. But that is a job for tomorrow. We got a ton of progress done in the last three or four days. Uh, that's where we're gonna call this episode a wrap. In the next episode, we're gonna get this thing to running. So it's gotta run really, really quickly. Hopefully it'll be running and we'll have three pedals, meaning we will have built the second manual Lamborghini Huracan in the world, even though this is not a whole lot of Huracan left, but the VIN still says Huracan, and that's what matters to me and my insurance bill is a lot higher. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate all the support. We'll see you guys soon. Peace!